So, believe me or not, uh, I'm a scientist. Well, you probably wouldn't have guessed it because of my good looks, of course, but I'm sort of what they call, let's say, an entry-level baby scientist. And trust me, uh, earning that scientist badge was kind of as real as it gets. Well, um, you see, there's kind of an issue. Because if I were to ask you, what's a scientist nowadays? If I were to ask each and every one of you, or even someone from my family, I'll probably get some different answers, you know, but they'd have mostly a common baseline, you know, a common ground on which uh, a scientist is a person, a creature that sort of makes huge discoveries and can do great things. And well, while you're partly right, because that is in my reach, maybe because of my uh, years as I studied and all of the knowledge that I've acquired, it is still kind of very far, far away. You see, this stigma that scientists are, let's say, otherworldly beings with capabilities and powers that we kind of do not comprehend, tends to chip away public trust rather than building on it. And you may be asking, OK, but why trust? You see, trust is crucial for the success of our mission as a scientist. You know, in order to improve the human condition, we need public trust. It is sort of a basic part of any relationship. So for the scientific enterprise to benefit both scientists and the public, there needs to be trust. You know? And if the public doesn't trust a scientific effort, there won't be um, much value to that effort, okay? and it will most likely not help society at all. So understanding what a, sci what a, understanding what a scientist truly, truly is, exactly, enhances public trust by demystifying their role and fostering transparency. And you may be thinking, but OK, still, How's trust these days? You see, there's been a decline in public trust, as we can see in these graphs. So it's still a topic that needs to be discussed. But OK, great. We've seen some scientists today. So you might be thinking, OK, but what's a scientist? Well, if you ask me, I kind of like to think of us as like the Katniss Everdeens of modern uh, worlds, where we happily volunteer as tributes in what I like to call the bloodbath, that is scientific living. You know, it's not a great picture, I know. But if you're not such a fan of these cinematic analogies, here you have the PG definition from the Science Council. Well, of course, I'm not going to have you read all of this, but I want to focus on this part right here, where it defines that a scientist is someone of relentless curiosity. OK, great. But there's an issue there. You see, this just kind of propagates the problem, because for that, we may all be scientists. So one thing that I've come to notice was that people often have a misconception on what this sort of curious creature really is. And since I obviously cannot separate the profession from the professional, I'll have to give you uh, some insights of what science is today. You see, as these misty creatures, curious creatures that we are, we obviously dress to impress, and for that, we always have sort of a lab coat. You know, you envision a science with a lab coat, and a good one does not leave his lab coat behind, which kind of tells you a bit a lot about me. But you see, the emblematic lab coat that we wear is not just a symbol of knowledge. It is sort of what I like to call a shield. Uh, it's a shield in the battle against an enemy that threatens the progress of science itself, which is the lack of funding. Well. Of course, I know that money, you know, everyone calls it the root of all evil. But uh, you see, the stark reality is that each and every scientist out there is trying to get to the price cornucopia. You know, the struggle for funding is not just a personal hardship these days. It's a collective barrier for the fundamental breakthroughs that our society desperately needs. So if we put on our tinfoil hats and we, do, and we look at the numbers, we can clearly see that by 2022, the gross domestic expenditure on R&D, which is shortened by G-E-R-D, in the European Union, it soared to about 352 billion euros, which you may think, OK, that's impressive. That's a lot of money. But you see, 
averaging at around, let's say, 800 euros per inhabitant, that money is still not enough to foster the massive outburst that we have in science these days. You know, even though there's been promises on reaching at least 3% of GERD by 2030, we have seen a decline in the European Union, parading towards more like 2%, which is an ultimate low against other global programs, such as those of the US or even Japan. Okay, and you might be wondering, does it get worse? Well, indeed, we can make it a lot worse, because we can zoom in on Portugal, and you might not see it there, but it's around 1.62% of GEID. And while there's been an improvement, well, this one has been really, really slight. You see, this shows a story of cautious progress for the funding of science in Portugal. But one thing's for sure, it's not the lack of our, community, of our scientific community, exactly, of the, uh, the Portuguese scientists. It's not a lack of their commitment to the cause. So would we call this simply because we have no money to invest, or is it for a lack of interest? Well, we can see that, because of the metaphor that I made, that we are tributes, okay, akin to tributes, we exactly have our hardships. But you may ask, okay, but is it all that bad? Well, let me tell you that scientists sustain most of what they do on grants. And not that lucky for us, these grants come accompanied with inconsistent contracts. You see, the uncertainty of the next project, and also paired with the financial tightrope that we as scientists walk on, all contribute to the modern scientist's reality. You know, a reality where job security is a fleeting concept, and the pursuit of knowledge sometimes feels more like a high-stakes gamble. Okay, because of this, you know, working in science is now mostly considered sort of a lifestyle rather than an ongoing job. And of course, that many of my peers and the people that I've worked with have dedicated their time and knowledge, well, not because of the financial retribution per se, of course, it's good to have some money at the end of the month, but they really love what they do, okay? And they spend their time doing what they love. But of course, and as we are mostly gathered here today because it's for the opportunity to enjoy more coffee breaks at the next Congress, you know, a scientist is therefore or can be characterized as more than a curious creature, a resilient and dedicated creature. Well, of course, with these analogies, I might as well be describing a unicorn. You see, we really need to understand how science is, the stake of science today, to come to know the scientists. But is it all like this? Are we, as scientists, all built the same? Well, I like to leave you to ponder a bit. And um, if, with all that we know about the common scientists from the 21st century, if I told you to guess, well, which of this is a scientist? I, mean, I can leave you a minute to think, but I think that the question is pretty obvious. You see, the more astute of you might have caught me off guard and thought that Amy Fowler there, or the actress Mayim Blyak, who plays Amy Fowler in the Big Bang Theory, is a scientist. Well, you're not wrong. You know, she holds a PhD in neuroscience. But the truth is that most people would have gone to the fellow over there in a lab coat, which is normal, of course. But do keep in mind that I took this photo from an online costume store. You see, this is a representation, and a representation that hardly uh, describes what science is today. You know, it hardly scratches the surface of the biodiversity that fills the scientific institution because every other person represented there is a scientist, is what we can consider sort of a scientist. Mostly because they hold various STEM degrees or academic degrees from PhDs to masters, or they've done some kind of research. But you see, they are scientists, but they do not look act or work as one. So they followed some sort of a rather unconventional career path, you might say. But okay, but why is that? Weren't they happy as scientists? Well, Dr. Dwight Randall 
actually gave a pretty amazing TED talk about it, about this issue, the rather unconventional career paths for scientists. And in this TED talk, he urges us to find the right fit, which he then calls uh, a place to grow and nurture ourselves. So let me ask you, if we as scientists wanted to fit, wanted to work for the betterment of the society, are we obliged to conform to what the world provides and live on grants and uncertainty? Or do we need to think the other way around? And does the world need to provide for better stability and start treating the science for what he or she really is, you know? So this curious creature with the power to change the world. The thing is that more than creatures, we as scientists are humans. And of course, I haven't forgotten industry in this almost sort of academia-driven talk. But hey, no one's really safe nowadays. You see, there's a growing trend in big pharma where industry is facing a tough time right now. Because in the first seven months of 2023, layoffs. So people just obviously being obliged to get away from their work, shot up by a massive 81%. And you know, even big names like Pfizer, BioNTech, Sage Therapeutics, no one's safe out there because they're talking about saving money by possibly cutting jobs soon, you know. So, one thing that remains clear is that a scientist is simply an everyday person, you see. This person has dreams. It faces the same struggles. It has the same needs as anyone else. So what I like to think and what I like to get out there is that as we journey forward, we should really embrace the human side of science, where we as scientists are not just experts in the field, making big experiments, working in labs, wearing lab coats, you know, but indeed, we are humans with dreams, with challenges, aspirations, and as a scientist, a deep desire to make a positive impact. So in this shared humanity, science now becomes a collaborative venture. And it is inviting everyone to be a part of the journey towards a brighter and more informed future. Thank you.